now recording. All right, everybody. Today is October 5th. Um, today's agenda is going to follow the same format as last week. And we're going to start off a little bit of an overview, some shout outs and announcements, talk a little bit about the wrap package and the updates that went out, um, and then pass it over to uh, Ben to talk to us about modular governance and creds, which he's been working on for a bit here. Um, as always, feel free to jump in, interrupt me, leave a note in the chat, um, or let me know if something isn't working. So you all should be seeing my screen here with an agenda. If not, please interrupt me. All right. I do shout outs again, like we did last week. Um, I know there's a lot of stuff that y'all are seeing on the front side of this, but on the back end, you know, Wrap Pocket is a multi-year venture in the making here. And I do want to call out that you know, Dermot specifically has been a really big driving force for this on the back. Um, and a lot of the help that he's gotten has come from the foundation. Um, and this is like Jack and Ads and Mateo, and obviously, and as well as a, a huge effort from the Raid Guild team to get this um, out there. So I just want to say thank you to the people behind the scenes and thank you to the rest of you on the on the front of this, supporting it, promoting it, and really just uh, celebrating with us in getting Wrap Pocket and getting into the DeFi of Ethereum, which is, um, we're all really hopeful that this is going to help push the um, help push the the pocket network forward and give us a bunch of momentum going into the new year. And I can uh, share, if possible, I'd like to add a share out Wrap Pocket related as well to all of the community members who dropped everything uh, when we soft launched uh and we're testing it out and giving us feedback we we're able to do a lot of um really important hot fixes uh, as a result of that feedback so a big shout out to those people as well yeah thank you so much jack it, it actually was a big effort you know a lot of stuff happened early morning yesterday and we got some kinks out that we just didn't have enough users to test so thank you again to everybody who participated um yeah we really are thankful again we're a small team and so um, having everybody come together has been really awesome um, I did do another shout out for Ben, who's going to talk a bunch about creds. But again, Ben's been working on uh, been working on creds for a while, and there's a ton of thought and documentation that has gone into this. So um, I'm excited for him to be able to share with you all what he's been working on. Um, and a shout out to NodePilot. They uh, they added another wallet, Node Wallet, and it is currently out um, on the Google. I think it's it's under developer right now, but it should be up for fully approved um, Chrome wallet soon. Uh, it does work with wrapping your pocket. And so if you want to learn more about that, um, we have a little spot where Shane or someone from his team can talk about it. But we're excited to add another wallet to the network and another option for everybody who does want to have wrap pocket and pocket. And now is an opportunity for anybody else if they want to unmute, share any shout outs that they have. Anybody wants to put anything in chat? Do -do. Great. Well, we're going to do this every week, y'all, at least until somebody else goes unmuted and, and does a shout out for someone. So um, appreciate you guys uh, giving me the opportunity to do this. I, I think it says a lot about the community to be able to thank people for the stuff that we just uh, don't always see. Yeah, Zach, it's, it's Ben. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, yeah, I want to call out Pocket News, who uh, is probably going to come up on this shout out quite a bit. But um, uh two things i think they've been um wonderful at creating content for pocket not just using their channel to sort of just disseminate information but actually creating content to uh, to share there which which is incredibly valuable but um also just want to uh, recognize like the power of work that they've done and the fact that um you know the broader web3 ecosystem is is recognizing them i think they're up over 4000 followers now from a a cold start probably less than 12 months ago um, with sort of zero. I think that speaks to uh, the momentum that they've built personally, but also, um, yeah, the momentum they're building for us as a project. So, um, yeah, really do want to recognise them. Them who I know are on the call. Um, but, yeah, wanted to make sure everyone gets that message too. Yeah, thanks, Ben. And I, I do want to call out specifically that, you know, there's a lot of stuff that happens that we don't get to see. So this is the opportunity for you all to thank the people that may not be getting the visibility. And, um, you know, even if it's not a project that about if they're doing something for your team and they deserve some thanks, this is an opportunity. So thanks again to the community. Thank you, Ben and Jack, for doing a shout out. I appreciate it. 
All right, some announcements. Um, there are currently no DAO proposals, but feel free to keep that uh, website uh, bookmarked and, and check in on it. We do have some uh, new updates in the forums, pops and sockets. So Ben has released a personhood spec. Um, Dermot has dropped some economics and governance R&D. So a request for help there to um, see if anybody in the community wants to help with research on that. And then the doc uh, has also opened a socket to help support Pocktober on Reddit. Again, sockets are, are intended to be permissionless. So please go in and learn about those and open a socket if you think you can add value. Um, you know, all skips rise. We win if we win if you win. Ben, I don't know if you want to talk at all about the PGov3. I can, yeah. I, I will cover it later in the in the creds um, sort of discussion, but um, yeah, it's it's really about um, uh, what does it mean um, to be a user of Pocket, and basically our ambition for Pocket is that it's a world scale piece of important digital infrastructure, um, and that needs a good digital identity for the people that are existing in its DAO. So this is really about setting the foundation around how we recognize digital identities and, and make sure they're connected to our personhood because we want a governance system that is really owned and governed by its users. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll cover that in more detail, but this is um, just the foundational piece of, of having our, um, our governance set up for, uh, for the future state. Great. Thanks, Ben. i to hear more about that. Um, Dermot, do you want to speak anything about the, the proposal you opened? Yeah, sure. It's um, more of a continuation of what I've kind of been mentioning in the forum for a while now. We have block science who are doing their work to essentially define a mathematical model for Pocket, and they'll be testing, um, modeling, and simulating all of our existing <coughs> mechanisms, or at least our mechanisms that we have specced out well enough. I'll go into the Shannon upgrade, at least on launch, or the kind of the planned kind of upgrades thereafter. Um, and that's great. And that's these are a lot of our really core mechanisms in terms of staking and everything else. But actually, there's a lot of other really important economic mechanisms um, that is up for the protocol team, PNF, but also the broader community to take on because those mechanisms need to actually still be kind of properly defined and worked out. So the, yeah, the, call, the call out is to please review that spreadsheet, see if there's anything there that interests you, whether it's talking about kind of uh, how do we pay in terms of the intensity of the computational units. Um, a few, a few like lots of it are um, interesting areas, some big, some small, and everything in between. And if you can, if you're interested in there, even just to call out, say, you could work on a specific aspect of that, but then you'd love some help on other areas. I think we really want to see more of that kind of cross-community collaboration. So yeah, it's just a call out to say there are areas that will need to be worked on. Um, of course, the, the protocol team and the broader community that is helping contribute to the protocol is working on some of this stuff, uh, but not right now. And I'm sure they're thinking about it, but actually having more people, these mechanisms helping to define some of the initial parameters. And so we can all start to test them together. It's, it's, it's ready to call out. So yeah, um, please go into the forum, please check out the spreadsheet and please ask some questions and I'll do my best to help you and, and block you wherever I can. Right. Yeah. And that's something we don't see um, a ton of, like a lot of development currently and some design stuff, but um, I haven't seen a lot of economic stuff. So for people who are, let's just say, economically minded, um, this might be a great opportunity for you to get, or if you know somebody who is, please share it. You know, we're, we're trying to build the community and get more people involved. So if you have a friend who's um, a perfect fit for this, please, please, please share it out. Thanks, Dermot. Okay. So the doc is not here. I'm going to pass on that one, but um, you know this is a socket, and again, we're going to be um, we're going to be working to get more sockets open. So please jump in there, open those sockets. We're excited to to have you help. Uh, some tech updates. So the launch of Node Wallet just happened. Huzzah! Shane, I see you're on the call. I don't know if you want to do a little plug or talk at all about it, but feel free to unmute if you do. Uh, uh, yes. And uh, we're excited to a beta version out. Um, in terms of the back end, it's uh, it's not a beta beta version. In terms of the back end, um, on the front end, we have opened a socket to uh, improve the UI and some of the UX components to it. Um, but uh, the cool thing is, is uh, you know, this wallet addresses everything that was in the original pop. 
um, uh, and uh, kind of beyond. We're really excited about how we were able to build it, and uh, we've got a cool modular style to it where we can add a V1, uh, really the moment it's ready. And then, uh, uh, yeah, while still being compatible with uh, uh, Morse, I should say. So, anywho, uh, yeah, really excited about that. So feel free to uh, get it. Uh, docs available. It's also in the uh, pocket documentation as well. Um, and you can install it now while it's going through the uh, store process. Um, but then benefit is once it's in the store process, the migration will be super easy because it's all just seed driven. So you can just uh, add your seed and you're off to the races. Thanks, Shane. Yeah, do you want to drop a, a link in the chat here so that way people can jump to it? And then we've also had it added to, the, well, your team added it to the docs. So um, if anybody does have any questions, the official docs have Node Wallet in there as well as Send Wallet and the Ledger official Pocket Wallet. Um, yeah, feel free to jump in there and give us any feedback if it feels like something's missing. Thanks, Shane. All right. So Grobe, they just had a, a rebranding and they launched that. I don't know if we have anybody from Grobe on here who wants to speak about it. Looks like Arthur is not available, but um, if anybody does, feel free to jump off mute and give us a little heads up. But it looks really clean and slick. They did a great job over there, so feel free to jump over and, and give it a view. Congrats, Grobe. Yeah. And let's see, the launch of Wrap Pocket. So obviously that's the, the biggest news on the foundation side for this week. Um, Rack Pocket went live yesterday. Like um, I think like Jack said, we had some kinks and the community really helped us solve those. Really appreciate everybody jumping in, uh, giving us feedback. There is a new channel in the uh, Discord for Wrap Pocket support, which I'm going to leave open for probably for the rest of this year or until we clean up the Discord. Um, so feel free to point people directly to the wrap pocket for some support. And again, if anybody runs into any quirks or issues, you can surface it there or you can DM anybody from the foundation directly and um, we'll get on that right away. All right, some more announcements. Well, I have good and bad news. There's a lot of dates. The good news is uh, we've created a updated Google Calendar. So if you wanna scan that QR code, uh, you can join and we're trying to keep that up to date so you can see anything that's going on. That's gonna include everything from these community calls to the Node Runner weekly calls, V0 builder calls. We've got a Twitter space happening directly after this call. Um, I don't know if uh, someone from the foundation can drop a link to that in the chat, but we're gonna talk more about creds and um, a couple of the teams that have worked on that with Ben and us. So I uh, would love to see you all on that call and it will be recorded if you can't make it. So. Um, we will share that around after as well. But the important thing here is we have a calendar to try to track all of the uh, events and announcements that are happening for the next couple of months here, um, make it a little bit easier on your eyes so I don't have to have an entire page of announcements. Uh, big call out is the, the Wrap Pocket Bridge launched and we have over 6.8 million pocket wrapped at this point. Uh, I think that's, I mean, I don't know what we were expecting, but on, in my opinion, that's an incredible amount of pocket and shows one that everything's working and that people are excited to, to tap into Ethereum. So really excited to see where that goes. Um, we have an important announcement coming out tomorrow. I've added that to our Google calendar there. Uh, but yeah, I would love if everybody can tune in tomorrow between 11 and noon Eastern time to the official pocket Twitter or X, whatever we're calling it these days. Um, but we have an Anodis announcement and we really want to make sure that that gets promoted and, and shared around as much as possible. So many of you know it. I don't think it's a big surprise at this point, but we'd love for you all to turn it, tune in and help us support that. Uh, updates for next week. So on Monday, the Uniswap pool goes live. Uh, you guys will be seeing some news inside the Discord and regular channels about that. We have a Twitter space on the 11th and the DAO Pocket Incentives go live on the 12th. Uh, we'll be doing lots of announcements throughout the week, both on the Twitter and in the Discord, so stay tuned. Um, and then next Thursday, we're having a community call where we really deep dive on Wrap Pocket, how it's going, um, why it's so important to the, to the protocol and to the community. Um, and Michael Rourke's gonna join us for, for that one and talk a bit about his vision and why he thinks this is such a big deal. So really excited for that one. You don't even have to make a, a bookmark on your calendar because you now have this handy dandy uh, Google Cal, but I'm excited for everybody to join us. And then uh, open requests for help. So I'm just gonna 
pause for 30 seconds here and see if anybody has any requests for help that they need if they're working on a project um, or if they need anybody to tune into something. This is an opportunity to surface it to the foundation and the broader ecosystem. That's your 10 minutes or 10 seconds of silence. Um, thanks for the Twitter link, Ben. Yeah, just on, just on this one, I, I do want to call this out. Um, uh, um, like my my personal belief around DAOs is is there's lots of things they're not good at, <laughs> um, uh, but the things that they are good at are leveraging the power of a network. And I think we saw that with the uh, rapid feedback and iteration on Rap Pocket launch. Um, and I think it's the same sort of thing on requests for help. Um, I think everyone should be leaning into what we have here, which is a really powerful. Uh, network of connections to uh, to be finding talent um, because talent is ultimately the thing that drives us forward. So, yeah, I understand why it's a little bit quiet and, and maybe people haven't thought about it this way before. But, um, yeah, the whole community is here to support you to meet your talent needs. So um, if people do have things, they can certainly reach out to us direct but um, bring them to this call in future and, uh, and we'll see what we can do to help. Yeah, thanks. That's that's really you know the the thing here is you, know, you all have said that sometimes communication has been quieter than you would like with the foundation and so this is the opportunity for you to say here's what we need help on here's what you've forgotten about or are missing so open to that feedback and uh, personally I'm committed to making sure that we can get you the answers that you need so please please, please use us for that all right moving on to the next bit so um, wrap pocket bridge and updates. Uh, I mean, honestly, you know, the bridge, in my opinion, the bridge went off about as smoothly as I've seen anything go, which in my opinion is a huge credit to the amount of planning and pre-production put into it. Um, I've worked at many places where, where it's been a fire all day. And I feel like yesterday was iterative updates and small things that needed clarity and there were no big broken issues. So again, a huge shout out to everybody who helped with that. I, I feel, um, feel kind of, kind of honored to be in a community that, build stuff that just works. So thank you for that. Um, I am going to open the floor, Dermot. I don't know if you have anything you want to throw in here for the Wrap Pocket Bridge and the updates. Yeah, nothing nothing direct to kind of share it. Um, I was kind of echoing what you were saying and also Jack was saying in terms of everyone jumping in. Of course, Ray Guild were awesome, but actually right from the first forum post, um, there's been lots of great feedback and DMs. And generally a lot of sport as well as patience. We've probably had a couple of along the way. Thankfully, um nothing too drastic. But um yeah, there's been a lot of really goodwill and people trying to help as much as possible. So it's a general shout out to the whole community and to keep supporting us, right? I think next week's a big week as we actually tap into those decentralized markets on Ethereum. So I think that's super exciting. And of course, as we said before, none of this is a panacea, but it's just being able to access that, remove a lot of that friction for our existing community, but also for those who want to and help pocket and hopefully kind of become contributors and run nodes and eventually gateways and obviously stake for relays and everything else as well. So yeah, that's all, all super exciting. So um, just a general shout out and thanks. Yeah, thanks, Dermot. Appreciate that. Um, back ads, I don't know if you want to add anything with wrap pocket. Otherwise, we're going to move forward and pass it over to Ben for creds. Silence is my Hey, right, well, Ben, I'm going to pass it over to you. Do you want to share your screen or do you want me to just kind of bop through as you're going? If you could do it, that that would be great because um, I'm working through the app, which is, I think, not able to share screen properly. But um, No problem. Yeah, if, you could, you. Uh, if you could drive for now, that'd be awesome. Um. So yeah, just just before I sort of dive into this, um, we uh, put forward um, this idea of 3D governance uh, a few weeks ago now. Um, 3D governance is a specific implementation of modular governance. Um, but what we've realized is that uh, one, um, we need to speak a little bit more about modular governance, what it is, why it's important. Um, but two, modular governance gives us a really good implementation method to bring people on the journey. I think one of the key things around um, governance changes is that they feel legitimate and legitimacy comes from people understanding decisions that they're making um, and being involved in the process. So um, 
yeah, that's uh, that's what brings us sort of to this conversation today. Um, so if we go back a little bit, uh, back to, I guess, uh, later in 2019 and 2020, um, Jack created um, the first governance thesis for Pocket, um, which already at that time was talking about uh, modular governance is future-proof governance. Um, and the reason that is is... Um, there is a really great and strong quote there from Jack that not all contracts can be smart because the humans that write them are dumb. Um, I think all white papers should start with something as um, provocative as that in a way. Um, but it's actually not that humans are dumb. It's that we learn so rapidly. Um, it's just a situation where if we were to go back to uh, some of us when we were 20 or 21, um, we would be dumb by comparison to what we are today with all of that additional knowledge and information. So um, governance is a little bit the same. It's really difficult to work with immutable systems when you're constantly acquiring new information that requires change. So the purpose of the governance that we're trying to create with modular governance is something that is both flexible um, and legitimate. And the flexibility comes from creating something that is a little bit more modular something that allows us to make sort of future design decisions without changing the whole system, um, but also legitimate in that people can understand the whole system and why we're making those changes. I might pass to Jack just for a sec. Um, Jack, anything you want to add on that? Yeah, um, you did a really good job um, uh, of kind of summarizing there. Um, but yeah, one thing I think to, to call out here uh, on the legitimacy point is, uh, and how it ties to modularity, is um, there's this idea in modular systems where you have these uh, loosely coupled components that are able to evolve uh, relatively independently of each other, but they have a standardized interface that they communicate to each other uh, via. Uh, so as an example, uh, one of the uh, modular systems that uh, we probably a lot of us have interacted with a lot is uh, iOS, uh, the iPhone, and the fact that there's a standardized operating system, and then you can go to the App Store and you can download all of these different applications, and those can update independently of each other, but actually interoperate with each other uh, using um, the operating system. So that that is key there, and within like applying that model to governance. Uh, is the idea that we have um, a rule set for how uh, an underlying rule set for our, our governance that uh, that also connects these different governance modules together. Uh, this is one of the things that uh, helps us to maintain legitimacy of the DAO, uh, so that, like for example, we can upgrade how we do uh, personhood, we can upgrade how we do reputation. Um, we can make updates to snapshot or on-chain governance or whatever, uh, but still have everything else be uh, operating as usual and communicating to restating what Ben said in more words, but yeah, there we go. <laughs> no, I think yeah, I think that's an awesome call out. And if we uh, if we go to the next slide, Zach, um, similar similar sort of. Um... Uh, analogy here uh, for those of us that are sort of terminally online um you know a lot of monolithic systems it's like sort of trying to do surgery on a grape it's very very difficult very complicated um and frankly ties together too much of the overarching system to uh, to make small changes um i think this is like a really important thing to understand around a lot of governance systems that are out there today i don't think many of them have the capability to change um, when you imbue power on a group such as token holders um, and then want to make changes to the level of power that token holders have, um, they're in control of the keys of meta governance and therefore uh, are probably um, unlikely to be uh, too supportive of reducing their power in that sort of situation. Um, uh, Pocket doesn't have that challenge. We've created a reputational system um, and in some sense are uh, victims of our success in that. We've pioneered proof of participation, um, but that has been at the expense of like having our token holders fully engaged. Um, and the capital that they provide is, is really a valuable part of our ecosystem. It does need to be recognised in governance. Um, but because of our design decisions so far in this original thesis, we have the ability now to 
um, enfranchise that group um, without sort of rocking the whole system. Um, and as we go forward and, and build something that's a little bit more modular, uh, we'll have the ability to continually tune that system as opposed to it sort of becoming more brittle over time. Um, what we hope is that it will become actually much more stronger. So, um, yeah, the, the analogy um, sits side by side with uh, Jack's sort of iOS and App Store um, approaches this idea of sort of creating our governance hamburger. Um, everyone has a different sort of hamburger. Um, it's on a case by case basis. Sometimes you need some meat, sometimes you need some cheese, sometimes you don't. Um, what we're trying to do here is, is actually give people an understanding of what are the components that can go in a hamburger. Um, and then each DAO, each governance system, um, can reckon with what are the things that they want to include in theirs and, uh, and off they go. Um, so that's sort of what we're doing. And then, Zach, yeah, if you can go to the next slide. Um, what we're doing now is starting the process of like working through this implementation plan with each module. Um, so the first one is personhood, um, which we'll talk about specifically in a moment. Um, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to share a technical specification for that module in the forum um, so that anybody can sort of participate in the discussion and the design and can ask questions, give feedback, really understand what each module is about um, from a technical point of view and what that would mean uh, for its implementation in Pocket. Side by side with that, we're going to have a blog post explaining the importance of the module uh, both broadly, um, because most of what we're doing today is applicable across different governance systems, but as well as what that is, why that's specifically for us. And as I've already alluded to, there are some examples there around enfranchising capital and stake, which we've never really spoken about in the past, and we'll try and um, expand on to make sure that um, people are a little bit clear around that. We're also going to have a Twitter space. Uh, we've got the first one today with our technical implementation partners so that uh, you, along with us, can ask them questions in public around the design decisions that they're making, as well as different thought leaders on the topic so that um, people in our community have information as really as possible to, uh, to make good decisions around how we, are, how we build up this system. And then the last thing is, yeah, some sort of signalling to help us reach rough consensus. Um, as we said already, um, each of these modules is sort of independent in a way, um, but does build into the overarching system. So it is important that we understand each of those components and the support for that and um, where we might need to make trade-offs or uh, diverge from original design decisions. And then at the end, it all comes together in a singular proposal around our meta governance, which is that legitimacy factor for me. It's the thing that describes how the whole system is um, sort of owned and driven. And therefore, it's the thing that sort of imbues power on everything else and um, is the point that essentially we would go live with our 3D governance model. Um, so there's quite a bit in there. We've sort of covered quite a bit of ground already just before we even get into personhood, which is the specific talk. But um, yeah, I might just pause there, see if anyone else wants to sort of jump in or ask any questions at this point. Okay, looks like we're good. Um, we'll have question time at the end as well, so feel free to jump in there. Um, Zach, if you could go to the next page. Um, the modular architecture is sort of described here. The topic today is around personhood, same as it will be on the Twitter space. Essentially, personhood is um, a digital identity that sort of represents each of us within the pocket DAO. Um, Pocket is really, like I said earlier, a, a world-level digital infrastructure. Our vision is for that infrastructure to be owned and governed by its users and deciding who its users are, who are the participants or members or citizens of that uh, community, um, is really uh, something that relies on a really strong digital um, identity. Now, um, today, our implementation of digital identity is pretty basic. Um, it's involved, I think Jack can probably expand on this, but um, it basically involves sending a selfie in Discord, um, which is a, a fine design decision for a, a sort of um, 
uh, MVP type governance system, um, but it's very limiting. Um, it makes it difficult for us to work with different types of people uh, because it identifies them um, visually. Uh, so as an example, Pocket News today can't get a vote in our DAO because they can't meet that personhood factor, um, that identifying factor um, in the current governance system. And we think that's something we, uh, we need to rectify for them and for others that want to come into our community in future from different backgrounds. Um, so, Zach, maybe if you can go to the next slide. Um, yeah, this is, uh, this is Gitcoin Passport. Um, actually, before I get into that, Jack, is there anything you want to add around personhood? I know you're going to be leading on the Twitter space later, but um, yeah, anything you want to share with our community now around that? Yeah, that's, I mean, there's there's a lot to say and a lot of that's going to be said in the Twitter space. So I'm kind of unsure um, what is worth saying now versus versus holding until later. But but yeah, just I guess just to, to reiterate um, uh, this really compelling uh, notion of um, like like personhood is ultimately fundamental to uh, our governance uh, philosophy uh, from day one. Uh, we have had a democratic governance model. Uh, from day one, one person, one vote. Um, there has been a qualification mechanism to determine um, uh, someone being a, tr a genuine stakeholder uh, through what we've been calling proof of participation. But ultimately, once people have earned their vote, there has been uh, a one person, one vote model. Um, and I think one of the things that has made Pockets DAO um, truly powerful and actually um, a lot of people have taken notice, uh, for example, Masari did their report earlier this year, is uh, just the, the levels of high engagement that we've had uh, relative to our overall size. And I think that's in large part due to the fact that we've had a democratic governance model. Um, ultimately, democracy is all about power by the people uh, and empowering people. And I think that in doing that and in empowering individuals in our community, and, and uh, enabling those who participate and contribute to have a say and not just to be drowned out by um, one or two whales, as you see in many other DAOs. Uh, we've actually given them a reason uh, to, to care and to participate, and that has ultimately led to a more engaged, productive DAO. So I think like a lot of people look at our DAO and see like, uh, that what we're building, although it has been uh, to date uh, rough around the edges, because uh, we've been kind of pushing the boundaries of what's possible within DAOs uh, with the tooling that's available. A lot of people look at what we're doing and, and see it as the future. Um, so, yeah, it's just really exciting uh, to be taking these these major steps to to formalizing it more, polishing it more, and um, yeah, being pioneers of what will hopefully be a model that many, many DAOs uh, start to adopt. Nice one. Um, cool. So, uh, so it's the scene, I think. So Gitcoin Passport um, is the specific technical implementation of digital identity that we want to uh, bring to pocket. Um, Gitcoin Passport is essentially a protocol that ingests your personal data, um, provides you a score, and then it um, represents that score out to different um, uh, users or tools or systems um, to help it um, essentially understand that you are, you are reaching sort of a, a humanity or personhood level, um, uh, which allows you different rights um, and actions within those systems. I think a simple way to sort of think about this is it is like um, giving people a scorecard to say that essentially you're a human, um, but not revealing your identity in the act of doing that, not revealing what it is that um, has been given to that system um, that identifies you personally as an individual or even identifies the sort of information that, um, that you have provided the system. So a simple example on the screen there is um, you might give Gitcoin Passport your Twitter handle and your Discords and your GitHub, um, and it will sort of give you a humanity score based on that information. Um, 
And then what it will present out is just the score to people. So uh, they will not know whether you gave Twitter or Discord or GitHub or whether you gave your Gmail or Facebook or ENS, um, which is a really, really powerful system for allowing us to meet the needs of a digital identity without essentially having to dox everyone in our community to, uh, to achieve that um, to achieve that aim. Um, now, of course, uh, there are still some, uh, I think, valid concerns that people have around um, something like Gitcoin Passport, having access to that information, um, which I hope will come up as part of the discussions in the forum. Um, but essentially, there is today no, uh, no more effective way of having privacy of your data um, and having um, a very uh, safe and secure digital identity um, than someone like Gitcoin Passport. And I think the fact that their very values aligned um, uh, and see themselves as the best um, technical solution and implementation partner for us to, uh, to bring into the pocket ecosystem. Um, so that is like a rough high level idea. Um, I think Jack, you're very good at sort of explaining things technically. And um, anything you, else you want to add around sort of the technical implementation of Passport? Again, yeah, we've got a lot of details that are going to be in the, in the Twitter <laughs> space. Um, uh, I think maybe, maybe one one key element here is that um, one of the nice way, like. I think a, a nice example of modularity in action here is how Passport is going to be um, connecting uh, with Snapshot, which is our voting module, um, and, and, and really provides an elegant way for us to enforce uh, personhood in our DAO, uh, which is essentially uh, this idea of voting validation um, and not enabling or not allowing someone to cast a vote if they don't hold a valid Gitcoin Passport. Uh, at the moment, our identity uh, implementation or a personhood implementation sits within Discord. Um, you uh, you you have to like do the whole selfie thing um, and then get a, a specific role within Discord, and then eventually you um, by combining that with your trophies, you get an airdrop of a vote. Um, we're unbundling all of that, uh, which actually makes it a lot easier for us to to make tweaks to upgrade the different modules. Uh, and ultimately, yeah, um, Gitcoin Passport is something that you can, uh, uh, it's an identity that you can hold uh, for multiple systems, not just Pocket. So there's less opportunity cost of going through the, the, the jumping through the hoops to, to, to get a valid passport. Uh, and then, yeah, you just cast your vote within Snapshot. It checks if you hold a passport and, and, and that's it. You're good to go. Uh, and we have the Gitcoin team, uh, the passport team constantly working on improving that, improving the UX of using the passport, um, making sure that it remains anti-civil. Um, so we have a, a team that are diligently working on that and, and we, we can kind of just plug it in and uh, and not really worry about it for the most part and, and focus on the parts of our governance that are unique to us. For sure. And uh, one small thing to expand on that is, um, yeah, that, that team working on that and specialising in, in that space um, gives us access to, of course, all of, all of their knowledge, um, but allows us to adapt the system as well. The specific implementation that we've recommended is that uh, people have a humanity score of 20 um, to have a digital identity um, which is valid for voting in the pocket DAO. Um, Coin Passport team themselves are sort of tuning their system to find out um, what is the best score um, and can make adjustments to that over time. So, um, you know, maybe that score goes up, maybe that score goes down, maybe it needs to be composed in different ways. Um, we basically have access to the leading knowledge in that space um, that we can get from Gitcoin Passport without having it be one extra thing that we need to be uh, sort of constantly working on or assessing ourselves additional part of um, part of our role. So, um, yeah, I think it's a really, really great example, as Jack said, of um, modularity in ac action and the fact that um, we get that specialist implementation of the different components. Um, I think it is a good time, though, to maybe pause, Zach. Um, yeah, see what questions there are, open the floor around this. We've 
uh, come a long way. I probably should have said up front, apologies in advance to people that don't like to nerd out on governance because um, the last 15, 20 minutes might have been a bit boring to them. But, um, yeah, we really want to make sure that people understand this so that um, uh, they're comfortable to see it implemented, um, they want to vote for it, um, and it gets them excited to participate in our system, which is, uh, which is the most important thing to us. Looks like. Cool. Hey, um, I'll just jump in because I always kind of like to understand um, how people think about this. But yeah, I guess I'd be interested to know what do you think most people don't get about what we're doing with the proof of personhood side? And I, I guess there's even context there is that I shared a Twitter thread um, but I think by one of the founders of um, Rabbit Hole last night that was kind of questioning anti civil mechanisms. Um, and I'd just be interested, yeah, Ben or Jack, if you want to kind of talk about what do most people not get when they think about the importance of a system like this? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I can speak to that specific example. And, and for people that haven't seen it, we'll, we'll sort of try and find the link and share it. Um, it, it, the, the idea behind that post was basically that anti sybil systems become a honeypot for sybils. Um, so sybils sort of flock to an anti sybil system um, because the cost benefit to them um, obviously uh, obviously is works in their favour. It costs very little to create a sybil, a fake digital identity, um, but the payoff through something like an airdrop. Um, yeah, is is so valuable that it's it's sort of worth that effort. Um, and I think the thing that people don't understand, um, and perhaps one of the challenges in the anti civil space, is that it's valuable in um, the context of the broader system of um, in which it operates. So. I think there's no sort of anti civil system that doesn't get bothered and and is sort of. Um, uh, possible to uh, to exploit or capture in some way, um, but the the value of that module exists in the broader system. So we're making this a gateway to start earning reputation in the DAO, to start earning governance power in the DAO. But we don't attach any uh, reputation or governance power to the personhood itself. And therefore, we avoid a lot of those challenges, probably the botting and sibling that takes place by creating one of those systems to begin with. Um, so I think, I think, yeah, that's that's my feeling on that sort of specific example. I think the other thing not well uh, understood is the fact that um, you can have an identity where you expose your information. Um, but that information is not exposed to others. And whilst um, for Gitcoin Passport, you're associating your wallet with, say, your Twitter handle, um, nobody uh, beyond the Gitcoin um, protocol actually knows times have a, a bit of an aversion to that. Um, but actually, whoever is... Um, uh, sort of holding your information around Discord um, or Twitter um, actually has access to the same type of information. So essentially, if you're willing to use a tool like Twitter, you've already exposed yourself in the same way that you would with Gitcoin Passport, except with Gitcoin Passport, um, they don't represent that information out to anyone else. So yeah, I think I think this idea of privacy and, and exposure of information in these types of systems is something that's a little bit complex and, and maybe people don't fully appreciate. Um, but I, I would say Gitcoin Passport is actually uh, more private and secure um, than sort of these other systems you've already exposed your information to. Um, Jack, you should probably jump in there too. You might have a different take. Uh, yeah, I guess just to, you were saying about the fact that we're not using the passport as a sort of, um, like a, an exclusive path to voting power like there's no like no one that only has a passport will be able to 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 vote in the DAO uh, they would pass the the voting validation uh, uh, gate that snapshot will have 
but they would have no voting power. Uh, the voting power will come from uh, the concepts that we've defined uh, in um, citizenship. Uh, so you're actively participating in our community and you have uh, demonstrated um, an understanding of pocket um, and alignment with our values, etc. Uh, and so we have citizenship as one component and that's going to be the lowest uh, friction uh, uh, path to voting power, um, but also uh, and, uh, like uh, as a result of that, we'll have this sort of smallest percentage of voting power within the DAO. Um, but again, citizenship itself is ultimately, um, it's, it's almost uh, between uh, uh, um, the uh, personhood and the uh, builder or staker components in terms of being uh, serving as a gate in itself. We're planning to use citizenship uh, as a gate to being able to vote as a builder or a staker uh, so it kind of layers on top of, like, they all layer on top of each other. You have to first, you have to prove that you're an, indi an individual person. You have to prove that you are a citizen of pocket. And then where you really get your, uh, the rest of your voting power from is by going uh, through the builder house um, to establish reputation, a proof of participation, uh, which is the direct analog of what we've been doing with uh, trophies in Discord. Um, or through the staker house by actually buying pocket and and staking pocket, so they're all layers on top. And so, yeah, this 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 concern about personhood by itself, um, personhood is ultimately most powerful when it's paired with what we what the other modules that we're going to have in the DAO, and actually enables those other modules to have intentional limits on them. So, for example. The citizen's house is going to be one person, one vote. Uh, we need the personhood module to enable that. Uh, the combination of that with the citizenship quest will will really uh, enable us to establish um, the, the, the notion of citizenship within the DAO. Uh, the builder house uh, is going to be reputation based up to a limit where it will be one builder, one vote. Uh, and again, and in, in order to be able to do one build or one vote, we need the notion of personhood, because otherwise people will just spin up multiple builder identities and 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 go through that reputation process over and over again. But uh, the idea is that by combining the friction of uh, the passport to prove your personhood and the friction of like participating, contributing, earning reputation we're able to get a pretty high confidence level that we have unique builders within the DAO. Uh, and then, yeah, in the staker house, we plan to do a square root weighting of tokens so that we're uh, leveling the playing field between the smaller uh, stakers and the whales in the DAO. And again, to prevent anti -sib uh, to prevent Sybil of uh, attacks of the staker house, uh, we need this notion of personhood that we can combine with that. So, yeah. The, in other words, TLDR, the, the modular governance system is greater than the sum of its parts. Each of the modules interacts with each other and creates uh, a very robust multi-stakeholder governance model that empowers all of the different stakeholders in the DAO. Yeah, I think that's a great description. Um, each, each part is more powerful in the, uh, in the overall system design. Um, coming back to, to Dermot's sort of question around um, yeah, the the rabbit holder, um, uh, rabbit hole. Sorry, um, take on anti symbol. Um, cu couple of things just to cover from the chat. So Art asked whether, um, yeah, our existing DAO voters are being grand. Um, yes, they are. Um, they're being grandfathered in with their existing powers. Um, so they will have sort of one full vote as a builder in the DAO um, coming across. Um, what it's not possible to do is to uh, grandfather them in without a Gitcoin passport. Um, so they will have their voting power um, transferred over um, and their power to vote um, will be enabled by having a valid Gitcoin passport. So um, yeah, we'll we'll handle the migration. We'll make sure that people transfer across to the new system with their existing powers, um, but they will need to have that uh, that digital identity requirement going forward. Even though they've sort of gone through this process before, it's not possible for us to really recognise that in the uh, in the strategies of voting. 
Um, and therefore, yeah, this is a new requirement um, and for existing DAO voters, the only requirement um, for them to, uh, to have their powers in the new system. Um, there's also a, a couple of questions around, yeah, using specific stamps, like having LinkedIn be a requirement as an example. Um, I think Alberto covered it nicely there, which is um, LinkedIn is actually quite a powerful one. Um, it has a, a somewhat heavy weighting, so it's likely that a lot of people will use that. Um, from our side, what we're wanting to do is create a system where the DAO has power over meta governance of stamps. It can decide an identity and we can make those a requirement within Passport um, to give it its voting power. Um, but we don't want to set that at the start. We want to use the logic that exists in the people that are probably most knowledgeable today, which is the Passport team themselves, let our own um, uh, sort of knowledge on that topic evolve over time and then start to make our own customization uh, as we go forward, which again, is really the design decision we're making here with having modular governance and going down this path. The thing to add as well is that the way that the sort of mechanism that we have or the lever that we have to calibrate the difficulty uh, of proving personhood is the humanity score. Uh, the Gitcoin Passport team recommends 20 as the minimum humanity score for anti-civil. And that is the score that we are proposing uh, because there are other sources of friction within the DAO um, that combined with 20 uh, feel like they're going, going to be anti-civil, uh, uh, sufficiently anti-civil. So uh, you, you, it's not going to be enough just to get 20. You're also going to have to prove citizenship. You're going to have to uh, actively contribute and get your builder uh, credentials. Um, and you're going to have to buy in state pocket. So, we do have the means to go higher to take a score of, um, but ultimately it's a trade-off because uh, in doing that, we would be adding uh, a fair bit more friction uh, to onboarding into the DAO, which uh, for those of us uh, who had previously tried using Bright ID, uh, when, we, when we used that prior to the Discord MVP um, and spent months trying to prove that they were a unique person, it's not an ideal experience. So uh, we, we, we've we opted at the moment for 20 just to, to strike that balance. Um, but yeah, if, if people want to uh, engage with this proposal and, uh, and they want to test uh, different uh, concepts within, within it, uh, you can take a look at the, uh, the scores uh, that Gitcom Passport attributes to each of the stamps. You can maybe model out um, like what it takes to get to a score of 20. Uh, and if you have any concern around uh, getting to that score of 20, you feel like there's a path of least resistance there that could be gamed, things like that. Uh, or you have any thoughts about the, 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 like the modules overall and how they interact, uh, we're, we're open, open ears. Uh, please feel free to, to chat with us, to, to reply to the relevant forum posts uh, and whatnot. Thanks, Jack. I want to jump in and say we've got about two minutes till the, the actual Twitter space. So um, I want to give you guys the opportunity to wrap up and jump over. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Zach. The, the conversation will continue over there and we'll have the Passport team on that call. So um, you'll be able to ask them questions directly on the space if uh, if you follow us over there. And, and if not, we're available. Uh, here or through the forum or through DMs to answer any questions. This this last one is just, um, yeah, on our pocket DNA. Um, it is a really core component of sort of what we're building together. It is also in a way part of the governance system, which will be covered in the next couple. Um, but, yeah, if you can access that QR code there, um, we're just really wanting to check in on our, on our DNA, um, the way our community is sort of living our values, um, uh, to give us sort of a temperature test of are we moving in the right direction and um, is there more that we can be doing. So, um, yeah, hopefully people are able to sort of log into it now. It should be open for you to vote directly in there, um, but we might need to share that out in some other um uh, methods, Zach and Pocket News, to uh, to make sure that everyone gets it. Given them, um, we're sort of at the end of time right now. Great, yeah, thanks, Ben. I really appreciate that. And obviously, um, the Twitter space is happening in about one minute here. So if y'all need to jump, please do that. And 
everybody else, you've got the link to the Twitter space in the chat, and you can jump on over there. Uh, typically, we have a couple of minutes for Q&A. I don't think we have that time today. So if you want to raise any questions in the community chat, any final thoughts? Yeah, it seems like people are dropping. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Again, appreciate your time on this call. Next week, we will have um, Wrap Pocket updates, and uh, Michael Rourke is going to be joining us. Really appreciate everybody. Talk to you all in about a week. Thanks. Thanks, all.